I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering and in today's class we shall discuss about the first law of thermodynamics applied to the control volume system and if we try to recall that uh, in the last class we have established the mathematical expression of first law for a control mass system undergoing any general process. So, now question is that uh, having established the expression of first law for a control mass system which is applicable to any processes, then why do we need to go for the expression of the first law which is valid for the control volume system. So, you know that uh, we have studied fluid mechanics and in this course as I told you in the last class we shall be discussing a few systems to be precise thermal systems like power system, refrigeration system, system which are used to operate the internal combustion engines and those are known as mechanical systems. So, in all these systems we shall learn slowly that there is a working substance. Not only the working substance is fluid rather there will be a continuous flow of the working substance. So, in all these systems net transport of energy either in terms of heat or work is you know done through the transport of a working substance which is fluid. And in fluid mechanics you know that uh, we have learned the transport equations are generally expressed from a control volume approach rather than a control mass approach. So, if we try to write the you know that uh, since all the processes involving a flow of a fluid transport equations are generally expressed from a control volume perspective rather than the control mass system. Here also the underlying transport of heat and work I would say the underlying transport of energy is or can be studied conveniently for a system in which fluid flow is involved from a control volume perspective. And that is why the first law of thermodynamics can also be you know expressed rather we should see today how can we express the first law of thermodynamics from a control volume perspective. So, just for the recapitulation whatever we have discussed in the last class the first law of thermodynamics right. So, for the control for a control mass system we could write the expression is like this. Here one important assumption is that the changes in kinetic energy and potential energy are neglected. Okay. So, this is the assumption and it is because of this assumption what we could write, we could write 
change in energy with this change in internal energy. Okay. So, this is the first law of thermodynamics for a control mass system and this is valid when the process is any general process. It is not necessary that the process has to be a cyclic process. Okay. So, now today as I was talking about that for the flow system and that is what uh, we should discuss today. For the flow system, I mean thermal systems in which flow of a fluid is involved. In fact, we shall be discussing all those systems in our subsequent classes and in these systems, flow systems, if you would like to study the transport of energy, I mean transport of energy by heat and work, it is better rather it would be convenient to study that particular aspect if we can express the first law of thermodynamics from a control volume perspective. So, this is the first law of thermodynamics for the control mass system. If you would like to express this particular system from the control volume perspective, then a mathematical expression will be required. So, the mathematical transformation will be required. So, we need to have trans mathematical transformation of this particular equation, so that we can conveniently study the transport of energy from a control volume perspective. I am not going to discuss in detail though you have studied that particular aspect in fluid mechanics, but you know that if you would like to express or if you would like to change or if you would like to write the transport equations from the control volume perspective to the control I from, uh, from a control uh, volume perspective, one important equation is used and that is known as I mean one important theorem is used and that is known as Reynolds transport theorem. So, the Reynolds transport theorem is used to express the transport equation from a control volume perspective. So, if we try to just recall what is Reynolds transport theorem. So, or RTT in short that is just I am writing the expression assuming that you have studied this part in fluid mechanics course. Right. So, this is the expression and we should write one important term just I am marking it okay. and then another part is there that is control surface. Again, I am marking this particular term, this. So, you can see that uh, I am not going to discuss about this particular equation, but this is Reynolds transport equation which is used. This equation allows us to write the transport equation from the control volume perspective. So, you know that here N capital N that is any property. Right. You know that uh, this n is essentially an abstract, it can be anything. So, it is any property and small n that I have you know 
encircled here I mean in the first and second term of this right hand side. So, this is property per unit mass. Small n which is encircled by this green color which is property per unit mass. So, you know if we look at this particular you know equation you can see that uh, left hand side of this equation which is time rate of change of the property and it is it, it is as I told you it is uh, it can be any property of the system while it is change of the time rate of change of property n within the system. So, the time rate of change of any property within the system can be expressed in terms of the time rate of change of the property within the control volume plus this extra term is there. So, this extra term is the rate of efflux from the control surface through which flow will takes place. So, as I told you our objective is to express first law of thermodynamics from a control volume perspective. Why? Because all the systems that we, we shall study in uh, you know in this course is uh, you know involved with the transport of any particular liquid fluid that is work, as a working substance. So, when there is a flow of fluid, so the net transport of energy because of the transport of fluid is, is essentially this term. So, basically you know that this is time rate of change of the property within the system which can be written in terms of the time rate of change of the property within the control volume plus the rate of the efflux of the property from the control surface or rather from the control surfaces in which uh, flow is there. So, it is rate of efflux of the property from the control surfaces where flow occurs. Okay. So, let me write it where flow occurs. Okay. So, this is that case. Now, as I told you we shall try to write or express that means, this transformation equation will be used to write the you know uh, first law of thermodynamics for the control volume system. So, you know that uh, I mean essentially as I told you first law talks about whether it is it is a statement of the conservation of energy. So, when there is efflux, so as I told you from for the control volume system, there is efflux through the control surfaces where flow occurs. So, now when there is a flow, so mass flux is there. So, you know that, so this term essentially indicates transport of energy because of the transport of mass in a system in a control volume system uh, we may have multiple inlets and multiple exits. So, through multiple inlets there will be a flow and again through multiple outlets there will be a flow. So, the energy transport due to the mass flow is taken care by this term. So, why I am telling you? So, essentially if you would like to write first law of thermodynamics, 
we also need to have the mass balance equations because in if you'd like to write first law of thermodynamics for a controlled volume the energy balance that first law essentially talks about is not a you know uh, balance in an isolated manner rather the energy balance has to be coupled with the mass balance why because mass flux is there because of the flow and the energy transport associated with this mass transport should be taken into account. So, if we try to write the mass balance using this equation, so mass balance. So, you know why we need to study this mass balance because in a control volume system when you are trying to establish the energy balance equation this mass balance is an integral part. So, mass balance. So, when you know capital N equal to m and small n equal to 1, right. So, we can write d m by d t system equal to d d t of C v rho into d v plus I am writing C s rho into you know v relative this eta cap d a right because small n equal to 1. Okay. See, you know, uh, small n equal to 1, so I did not write 1 over here and 1 over here. This eta cap, this is a normal pointing outwards, so outward normals. Outward normal. See, you know that, so basically if we try to complete this equation by doing one or two steps you know more, what we can write that d m d t for a system. So, you know that uh, this is for the system. So, this is for the this is for a system and this is for a control volume. So, essentially left hand side talks about the control mass system right. So, in this case so, a time rate of change of any property within the system that is control mass system can be expressed in terms of control volume plus the efflux term. So, by definition mass is fixed for the control mass system because uh, this is the definition. So, this quantity is equal to 0 right. What about this quantity? This quantity you know that if I try to write using different color. So, this quantity is nothing but m c v. So, this is m c v right. So, if we try to write this equation is 0 equal to d m c v d t plus what this term? This is relative velocity you know this relative velocity can be written like v minus v c. So, you know control volume is fixed in re, you know control volume is fixed in a reference in which velocities are described. So, this is relative velocity which is nothing but the fluid velocity minus the velocity of the control volume right. So, I mean it is the definition. Now, this term if you try to recall that this is if flux from the control surface v relative dot eta cap if we integrate it over the control surface and assuming that the properties are remaining uniform that means rho is remaining uniform over that particular cross section. So, here important concept is that if we integrate this term and if we assume rho is remaining constant over that particular you know cross section, 
I mean, if we, we have multiple inlets, multiple outlets through which you know uh, f fluid flow is taking place. So, this is essentially you know this term is essentially mass flux. So, this is mass flux from the control surface. So, you know that we will be having mass flux through the inlet, we will be having mass flux through the outlet. So, if we try to write it, so this would be mass flux through the inlet plus mass flux through the outlet. So, I am writing here. So, this is I, this is E. Here, I am writing inlet, I stands for inlet, E stands for exit. I am using the same notations which are followed in the textbook. So, this is mass flux rate of mass you know leaving from the inlet. If we have multiple inlets and multiple outlets that is why I have used the summation sign. Now, I would like to discuss this V relative dot eta cap you know this is outward normal. So, if we take a control volume like this and if we have so this is outlet and this is inlet. So, you know that V relative dot eta cap is positive for the outlet or exit it is negative because normal is always pointing outward from the control surface. So, this unit you know vector outward normal which is I mean this is pointing outward from the control surface. So, the dot product it will be you know negative for the inlet and it will be positive for the outlet. So, if we try to change the I mean if we try to write it correctly it would be positive it would be negative rather I can write it in a form that is exit minus inlet. So, this is basically mass balance equations, mass balance equation. Again I am telling E stands for exit, I stands for inlet. I have discussed about the sign convention because this V relative dot eta cap is positive for outflow and this V relative dot eta cap is negative for inflow. Okay. So, that is why uh, you know that this sign con we have we have already uh, discuss this and we also consider that particular sign convention in this equation. So, this is the mass balance equation and summation sign is taken if you know we have multiple inlets and multiple exits. Okay. So, you try to understand you know by using this equation that is Reynolds transport theorem, we could write the mass balance from a control mass system to the control volume system. Okay. Next, we are going to discuss about the energy balance. So, energy balance as I told you that uh, N is abstract, it could be anything. So, basically you know that N say it is capital E. So, that is what I am writing. Since we are trying to write the energy valence equation and energy valence equation we will be writing from a control volume perspective. Now, we are using this Reynolds transport theorem. Now, N as I told you it, it can be used to describe any property. So, here we are writing E. So, therefore, small n will be equal to small e. So, this is specific energy. So, 
So, if we try to write the Reynolds transport theorem, then we can write d d t for the system equal to d d t of control volume rho e d v plus we are writing control surface rho e v relative eta cap d a. Mind it the small e is the specific energy right. So, this is what we can write. Now, it is very important that uh, what uh, we can do further. So, this is essentially you know this left hand side gives us a clue about the change in energy within the system. So, it is essentially you know the first law of thermodynamics and this part I mean again if I try to write using different color. So, this part can be written. So, you know that uh, one important assumption that I could not write over here is that I am writing properties are uniform over the respective cross sections through which flow occurs. So, this is important assumptions, this is one of I mean this is an important assumption which is used to describe this equation. So, here we can write this, this is del del t of rho d v again I am telling if we take that this is within the control volume. So, this is capital E C v right. So, you know that rho d v that is mass E small e I mean that may vary within the control volume, but you know that uh, if we multiply with that mass we will be getting total energy. So, this is this uh, I can I mean this expression this quantity can be written like this plus I can write this expression in this form that control surface you know rho e v r dot eta cap d a. We shall come to this particular term later. Okay. Now, as I told you that this gives us an information about the change of energy within the system, time rate of change of energy within the system. You know I would like to tell you one important thing in this context that you have studied about thermodynamics right. So, why we are calling it thermodynamics, why not thermostatics right. So, in thermodynamics you know dynamics the word dynamics is coming from the fact that I mean whenever we are trying to study something or rather whenever we are trying to describe something which is having time rate of change of any uh, you know property. So, basically time rate of change of anything I mean if you would like to study then only the you know word dynamics will come into the picture. In thermodynamics also we would you know prefer to write sometimes the equations in the rate in the rate form and that is why we are writing d d t with the system. So, time rate of change of energy within the system since we are trying to write it time rate of change. So, that is why the word dynamics is coming into the picture. So, it is not a thermostatics. So, this gives us you know 
impression about the first law of thermodynamics of a control mass system. So, basically if you would like to know the time rate of change of energy within the control mass system, then I mean what we can do, I mean this is the change of energy within the system and that is basically again I am telling that is essentially you know uh, giving us a clue about the knowledge about the first law. right? So, as I told you first law essentially talks about the energy conservation. So, it is a statement of energy conservation. So, this term left hand side term which is giving us the you can clearly see that is the time rate of change of energy within the system. So, that is giving us a knowledge about the first law of thermodynamics. So, this fellow can be written from the first law which is applied to a control mass system. So, if we try to write first law applied to the control mass system that is nothing but del cube equal to d plus delta w. Right? If we again ignore the changes in kinetic and potential energy, you know, I mean changes in kinetic and potential potential energies, then we can write it in this form. Uh, u, but we are we are writing since we are trying to write the general, we are trying to express the general form of the first law of thermodynamics. It is better to write E. Now, see you can see that this quantity is basically written in the in, in the in the time rate form. So, we also so this is first law. for a control mass system. Essentially that is the change of energy within the system. So, if we try to write in the rate form what we can write? We can write like this say you know del q and del w and d all these quantities are written in the differential form, but we have to keep in mind that q and w these are the path function. So, we have written in the form of inexact differential wherein E is the you know point function because this is the property of the system and that is why we could write in the form of a exact differential uh, in the form of uh, exact differential. So, now if you would like to write these quantities in the rate form we can write like this you know delta cube by delta t as limit delta t tends to 0 equal to limit you know delta e by delta t delta t tends to 0 plus limit delta w by delta t delta t tends to 0. Again, let me tell you one important thing where we are considering delta t tends to 0 because you know that the Reynolds transport theorem, the derivation of the Reynolds transport theorem is based on important assumption is that the delta t tends to 0. That means, the system and control volume are coincident. So, basically when delta t tends to 0, I mean if, it, if you try to recall the derivation of Reynolds transport theorem, if you cannot recall I would suggest you to consult with any standard fluid mechanics books. You will find that the Reynolds transport theorem is derived based on an important assumption is that delta t tends to 0 and this is considered keeping in mind that the you know overlapped area that is the system and control volume will coincident. So, that is why we, are try we have written delta t tends to 0. Why? Our objective is to express the rate of change of energy from a system to the rate of change of energy to the control volume. So, basically we are trying to express the rate of change of energy from the control volume perspective and that is why we are trying to do it. So, you know that we can write it that this is q dot equal to this is d by d t plus 
w dot right. So, if we try to write it in the next slide, so we have written q dot equal to d d t plus w dot. Hence, we can write you know this is for the control mass system. So, we can write this is d d t for the system right. So, this is d n d t for the system. So, if we write it this is for system that means d d t for the system can be written q dot minus w dot right. See, so whether should we write q dot minus w dot this is for a system or for a control volume it is essentially for a system right. So, the quantity which we have written here that is in the right hand side of this equation this quantity is also applicable for the system. I mean we have written d d t for the system. So, this is q dot minus w dot this is also for the system, but we can write this quantity to be as you know applicable to be control volume as well. So, this quantity can be written I mean this is as good as q dot minus w dot control volume. Why? Because we have taken an important assumption that delta t tends to 0. So, as delta t tends to 0 system and control volume are coincident. So, you know that we can write. So, if we try to look at the expression which we have written over here that d d t system now can be written cube dot minus w dot this is C v equal to equal to d C v d t plus rho e v r dot eta cap d a control surface. Okay. So, this is what we can write. Now, I would like to tell you. So, basically you can see that uh, starting from the first law of thermodynamics for a control mass system, we could write this expression. So, here you know that this is q dot that is you know change of you know I can I can write the time rate of change of heat within the control volume minus this is time rate of change of total work within the control volume is nothing but the time rate of change of energy within the control volume plus the rate of energy flux. So, basically rate of energy in into the system and rate of energy out from the system because of the mass flux. Now, see this w dot. So, if I try to write again using different color since this w dot if we write this w dot it is having two different components right. What are the components? You know that uh, if we talk about a control mass system still there will be w dot because it is energy transport either by heat or by work. In this particular course in fact, you have studied in thermodynamics that we talk about energy transport either by heat transfer or by work transfer. So, if we try to write this w dot one component will be there that is w dot C v. So, this is basically that is work done within the control volume. So, either work is added to the control volume or work is taken away from the control volume. On the top of that one additional component will be there try to understand because we are trying to study the first law of thermodynamics for a control volume system. Why? Because most of the thermal system that will be discussed in the subsequent classes you know involve transport of a fluid. So, when there is a flow of fluid within this control volume I mean we are trying to describe then a part of work will be associated with that. Why? because to maintain the flow in the presence of a pressure. 
So, without pressure difference flow will not take place, you have studied in fluid mechanics. So, if you need to maintain continuous flow in, pre in the presence of a pressure, then there will be work done. So, this work done I am writing this is flow work. So, this is the control volume work. So, basically you know that this is total work. So, this part is the work done by the control volume or work is done on the control volume. Either work is added to the control volume or work is taken away from the control volume. On the top of that this component takes care of the intrinsic work done associated to maintain the flow in the presence of pressure. If this part work is rather I, I should say energy. So, this part of energy is not there. I mean if we do not have energy associated with the transport of flow, then flow will not survive. So, basically to maintain the flow, some part of energy will be associated to that and that is W dot flow. So, if we try to write this equation Q dot minus W dot minus W dot flow. Okay. So, this is the left hand side, I am writing the left hand side. So, what is flow work? You know that uh, you have studied in fluid mechanics, say we have a channel, parallel plate channel, a very simple example I am taking and if we need to have continuous flow, say if we have a control volume and the control volume there is one inlet and there is one outlet. So, there is a continuous flow to the control volume and there is again continuous outflow from the control volume. So, this is outflow and this is inflow and this is CV. See if we need to have continuous inflow and continuous outflow, some part of energy should be associated with that. Otherwise, it is very difficult to have, it is very, it would be difficult to maintain the flow, continuous flow. So, if we take out this small part and if we consider this part, so it, say this is the inflow part and I am taking, I have taken here and I have tried to you know uh, draw the zoomed in view. So, if we have say pressure, so continuous flow, flow at is inlet and if we considering pressure here is P and it is because of this pressure the flow has advanced a distance say delta x through the channel right. So, this is inlet channel. Now, to maintain the flow you know in a continuous manner we need to have flow work or work done. So, work done to maintain the flow in the presence of pressure because you know and if we assume that the cross section the length of this particular portion is so small that the pressure is remaining almost constant. So, we can write work done to maintain the flow is equal to P. So, P into A that is force into displacement. So, that is work done. If you would like to write per unit mass, so this is work done per unit mass equal to P A delta x. If we consider that density of the fluid is rho and that is also remaining constant in this particular cross section. So, as I told you that properties are not varying over the cross section through which flow occurs. So, basically mass would be rho into A into delta x. So, you can see this is nothing but P by rho. That is what you have studied in fluid mechanics course that is known as flow work. So, the energy required to maintain flow in the presence of pressure is P by rho. In thermodynamics, it is convenient to write in terms of the specific volume because 
the specific volume can be easily you know cal calculated from the linear interpolation from the property chart. So, this is the specific volume. So, if we try to write the equation again q dot minus w dot minus w dot flow. I am not writing C V because uh, just I have omitted C V. So, basically this W dot is you know work done uh, by the system or on the system. So, basically whether work is added to the system or work, work is taken away from the system. You know that flow is there on the other hand that some amount of work done will be there within the control volume. Okay. So, uh, you know that uh, is nothing but D E C V D T plus plus rho e v r eta dot d a right. See we have uh, written this is work done per unit mass, but so work done due to the mass flux which is mass flux into the system and work done due to mass flux which is mass flux from mass flux out from the system. So, this is work done per unit mass I if we can calculate the mass flux into the system and mass flux out from the system then we can calculate total right. So, you know that uh, if we try to go back that uh, this quantity rho v r dot eta cap d a this is mass flux. So, this is mass flux from the control surface. So, mass flux out minus mass flux in. So, if we have control surface at the inlet and control surface at the outlet. So, mass flux out minus mass flux in. Essentially what I would like to tell you is that rho v r dot eta cap d a is the mass flux. So, we can write this quantity in this form that control surface P V into rho V relative. So, this is V relative dot eta cap d a we can write if we take out this particular term to the right hand side right. So, again if I take this particular term, so this is the total mass. So, total amount of flow work due to the mass flux in and mass flux out. So, if we take this term to the right hand side, we can write this equation like this q dot minus w dot. So, this is work done within the control volume equal to d c v d t plus if we take this control surface rho you know outside then we can write E plus p v E plus P V V relative I have written it like this. So, V relative dot eta cap d a right. So, this is straightforward what I did I have taken this term in the right hand side and just you know I have tried to you know uh, club these two term together. So, this is E plus P V. What is this E plus P V? So, basically if we write one step further that we can write Q dot minus W dot equal to D C V D T plus control surface you know rho uh, into E plus P V into V R 
dot eta cap d a. What is a plus p v? e plus p v is you know uh, uh, half c square plus g z plus small u. So, this is specific energy. So, I have taken I am writing half c square plus g z plus u plus p v. You have studied in thermodynamics that if we write u plus p v we are getting another important property that is enthalpy. So, you can write this is h plus half c square plus g z. So, that means we can write one step further that q dot minus w dot equal to d c v d t plus control surface it is written h plus half c square plus g z v relative dot eta cap d a. So, this is first law of thermodynamics which is very important to you know you know write over here that the first law of thermodynamics you know of a flow process across the control volume. So, this is first law, of, first law of thermodynamics of a flow process across the control volume. So, this is the you know this is very important h plus half c square plus z. Question is if the system is non flow system that is control mass system, we could write this total energy in terms of u. So, if it is a non flow system instead of s we can write u plus half m c half c square plus g z the total energy. But for the flow system that is control volume system where there is a flow across the control surface the total energy is written h plus half c square plus g z. So, this is nothing but the internal energy. So, try to understand this total part is nothing but u plus this is p v plus half c square plus g z. So, even if we do not consider the changes in kinetic and potential energies, this quantity for the flow system is nothing but the internal energy of the system plus energy required to maintain the flow in the presence of a pressure. Again I am telling even if we do not consider the changes and kinetic and changes in kinetic and potential potential energies, this quantity indicates the total energy which is nothing but the internal energy plus the energy required to maintain the flow in the presence of a pressure. Right? So, this is the difference between the control mass and control volume system. So, for the control volume system we are getting one extra term that is enthalpy and this is basically thermal energy for the flow system. So, this H is the thermal energy for the flow system and U is the thermal energy for the non flow system. So, this is what is important difference. So, you know that one important assumption is there that properties do not I mean we will we'll discuss again we will go on a few steps further to describe first law of thermodynamics for the flow processes you know across the control volume. Right. So, taking a few assumptions we can write this expression in different forms that part we shall discuss in the next class. So, with this I stop here today. Thank you.